We already know that the fretboard is not very self-explanatory. Unlike the piano, we can't obviously find where the same notes or the same chords or the same structures exist in multiple different places on the instrument. So in order to counteract that as guitarists, we need to have exercises that show us where certain structures exist in multiple places on the fretboard. And I have a really simple and awesome and effective exercise I want to show you for finding and learning and practicing chords up the neck of the guitar. By the end of this video, you'll know how to take one chord and play it in six different places on the fretboard with this simple method. I'm Jared from Sound Guitar Lessons, and this is episode seven of a lesson series all about how to learn, how to practice, how to master chords on the guitar. So here's how this method and this exercise works. We're gonna take one chord and play it in six different places. We're gonna make sure that we can see the root of that chord off the sixth string, off the fifth string, and off the fourth string. So that's three locations of the root. And then we're gonna be able to play two different chord shapes off of each of those root locations. And we're gonna think of it this way. We're gonna think of finding the root, and then there's a chord shape that exists to the left of that root, and you'll see what I mean, I'm gonna demonstrate all this, and there's a chord shape that exists to the right of that root. So there's gonna be a chord shape where the rest of the notes are built over towards the head of the guitar, and off that same root, there's gonna be a chord shape where the rest of the notes are built towards the bridge of the guitar, off of the root off the sixth string, the fifth string, and the fourth string. So that's six chords for any one chord. So let's do an example. Let's go ahead and find C as our first chord. So you do have to find note names on the guitar. You do have to be able to find the root names uh, anywhere along the sixth, fifth, and fourth string. If that's not something you have down yet, I have a video that explains it really well, and I'll put a link to that video for finding any note names on the fretboard in the description. So here's C, and then we're gonna have a chord shape off to the left. I think of it as off to the left. The root is here, and then towards the, the head of the guitar, the rest of the notes are built up the strings. You'll see the shapes on the screen, I'm just giving you the shapes here. You don't wanna play the top string for this one uh, because it's just not practical to, it's just not ergonomic to find a chord tone on that. So we just are gonna find whatever notes we can in that area to the left or right of the chord. To the right of this one, we have this nice big bar chord, uh, sometimes thought of as an E form in the caged system because it's the same shape as an open E chord. If we find C on the fifth string and the notes to the left of them end up just being an open C chord. So this is a really handy thing about this exercise and this approach. If there is an available open string chord going through this exercise, you will end up playing it. So it's kind of covering all the open string chords as well as anywhere else that we can play the chord. Same root to the right, we get this chord shape, which again can be thought of as an A shape moved up the neck. The fourth string root to the left of the, that root, we're gonna get this shape to the right of that root. We're gonna get this shape, which could, could be thought of as a D form. Um, I don't really teach the caged system necessarily, but it can be quite handy, so I often will say this is related to that open D shape. So that's it, those are the six shapes, and I just have the shapes for you there. We've done a lot of theory in this series, and we're not worried about that right now, as much as just saying these chord shapes are the six that you, should be able to see and find all up and down the neck of the guitar. And by doing that, you've touched on a chord shape that exists in every position where that chord can be. I'm gonna demonstrate the entire exercise for you. So we'll do more major chords, but first let's look at the minor chord shapes. So same thing with minor chord. Let's take A minor just because it's a common minor chord. This is gonna be that first shape. We found the root on the sixth string and then all the notes that are built to the left of it. Here is the root on the sixth string with the notes to the right of it. Here is the root on the fifth string with the notes to the left. Now I only want you to play those three because it's just not practical to include more notes than that. So I just want you to see the one flat three five, just that structure when we're on the fifth string. Uh, fifth string with the notes to the right. Well, it would be this, but that allows us to play an open string. So I want you to play it as an open string, uh, an open string chord, which is just any chord that includes any amount of open strings. Root on the fourth string, here's the first voicing. Root on the fourth string, the other voicing. Kind of like a D minor shape. So those are all the shapes to play the same chord in six different places for any minor chord. So do you have to master these? Of course not. This is more about seeing the fretboard and seeing relationships and mapping it out. Again, an exercise that kind of counteracts this issue of not it not being obvious on the fretboard where we can play multiple things in multiple places. These structures, we, when we get them familiar, 
uh, to us, then that will we'll start to see the inherent logic of the fretboard and be able to see things more quickly and see relationships, learn things faster, remember them longer, all of that stuff. So you might want to have a couple of these shapes at your fingertips ready to go for some variety with any one chord. But I'm definitely not saying that you need to have all six of them at any time ready to jump to. Uh, most of them actually sound the same. Some, some of them are the exact same notes and voicings just on a different string set. So again, this is much more about seeing how those shapes uh, different shapes on different string sets are actually the same notes. Very handy. So the complete exercise version of this is that we would take every root, there's 12 notes total in the chromatic scale. So we take every one of those as a major chord and every one of those as a minor chord and play all of them. You would play your two versions off the sixth string, off the fifth string, and then off the fourth string for we're going to start on C, and then you would do the same thing with all your major chords going through the circle of fourths. The circle of fourths is just when you're switching roots or switching keys, you're going to whatever root or key is up a fourth from where you were. So after C, you would go to F, and you'd do all the Fs, F majors, and then after F, you would go to B flat, and you would all do all the B flat majors until you cycle through everything and land back on C, and you've played all the chords. I'm going to demonstrate for you. Seems like a lot, but it's not going to be that bad. And of course, you do the same thing with all the minor chords. So there are 12 major chords, and there are 12 minor chords, so that's 24 chords, plus six places to play each of those, so tw 24 times six, that's 144 chords to play for this exercise that I want you to do. I'm going to play through the whole thing for you to show you it's really not that bad. That sounds like it's much more than it is. And here's how I want you to think of this. We already know that repetition is important when we're practicing. Of course, we're practicing the same thing a bunch over and over again to get it down. Well, with certain types of vocabulary that we want to get down, it's much better to practice that same thing over and over again in as many different places as possible, whether that's positions on the fretboard or keys or roots or all the combinations of all of those. So we're practicing these chord forms and we're really practicing finding them each time. And we get that repetition, we get that technique, we get that listening, we get that um, looking around on the fretboard and finding things. Um, and we don't get stuck in a rut of actually just kind of spacing out on the same thing. It keeps us on our toes. So anything that's important to me to get down in music on the guitar, I approach this way very systematically, very methodically, and I will play it through all of the tonalities or all the keys or all the modes or all the chord tones or kind of some kind of exercise that is very thorough in that way. Then when it's time to be creative, to be musical, to be expressive, to forget it all and let it all go and let loose, there are way fewer barriers to just getting to tap into something that you actually want to say artistically. And one more point to emphasize before I demonstrate this, this is not something that everyone has to do or everyone should do. An exercise like this, especially these kind of deep, thorough ones that are, that are systematic where I want you to go through all the roots and stuff, I want people to practice this to the extent that you can tell that it's valuable for you. And that's it. Right. So if it, if you don't get why it would be helpful or if you already know it really well or if you're not there yet or any, anything that if it just doesn't feel like in alignment with you, don't do it just because I said so. Right. Do something like this because it's like, oh, I can really see how that's going to be helpful. Or say you start practicing it and you're and, and you start feeling, oh, yeah, this is making me find chords in a way that I wasn't seeing on the fretboard before, something like that. So practicing something like this, that whole the whole system is there, or all 144 chords, but we only practice it to the extent that it's actually, we can tell that it's valuable for us. If you go through this type of thing even just once, it can be really helpful for just understanding how that exercise works and then move on and that's it. I'll usually do something like this maybe two or three times, maybe a few times. I don't add it into my routine as like a warm up or doing all the time because I don't want to do it mindlessly. The whole point is that it makes you think. And the most powerful and the most important thing of all is that you understand how to practice something and what it's doing for you, why you're practicing it and, and what the outcome is, what the solution that that exercise gives you, what the problem is that you're trying to solve. That is the most important thing. So learning about exercises like this and getting used to them, rather than necessarily needing to master them, that's fine too, again, if you're finding it valuable, but just knowing that that exercise exists and what gap it fills in is huge. You take that, it's a tool now, you put it in your toolbox and you collect these over time. And then you have these little prescriptions that you can pull out when you need them. Like, oh, I think I'm kind of, uh, for this situation coming up or for what I'm practicing or interested in right now, I can feel this certain gap or this thing I need to expand on. 
oh, there's an exercise that I know of or an approach or something that I know can help me with that. That is the most powerful thing. If you have a bunch of those, that matters more than what you can play. Because if we're playing things mindlessly, it could sound great, but it's not as much of the musical fitness that we want. That's not as much truly having control over music for expressing it. Okay, that's a lot of that. So I love talking about practice strategies, why we're practicing quality practice, deliberate practice, um, effective practice, very, very important. That That's probably the most important skill we can have because it's how all the other skills come to be. So I could go on and on about that and I probably will. Let me know if you are interested in hearing more about practice strategy stuff um, in the comments. Now I'm gonna demonstrate through this whole exercise just to give you the whole thing. So here's C major off the fifth string, that first voicing to the right, fifth string, fourth string. Here's F, F, fifth string, fourth string. Here's B flat, B flat. I'll play it down here too. Fourth string, E flat. It's making me find the roots every time. I tend to play whatever's furthest to the left of the neck. So instead of playing this E flat way up here, I played it down here. Okay. Uh, now A flat. Now D flat. G flat, F sharp, play it uh, over here. See, it takes me a second sometimes. There's G flat, B natural. I'm going very fast. Uh, you know, take your time finding it first. Just wanting to demonstrate through to you. Open string. Uh, oh, I might have played the E up here. I get to play that open E in that case. Um, A major. There's only two more. D. And G. And so G is a great example of this voicing that I usually have you not play the top string. Because it's an open string position, of course, just play your common G chord. That's great. G. And that's all of them. That's all the major chords. That was 72 major chord shapes. Here's same thing through the minor. C minor. C minor. C minor. C minor. F minor. F minor. flat minor E flat minor A flat minor D flat minor G flat minor. B minor. E minor. Nice big open one. A minor. And G minor is the last one. Super important on this minor that you do not play that second string. That wouldn't be good. That's the major third. It doesn't sound good. And there we go.
go. That's all of them. I played all 144. I played 72 major chords and 72 minor chords. Six versions off every root. I'll post the chord shape diagrams on my website so you can look at those if you want something to look at for practicing this exercise. You can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash blog slash lesson 51 or just use the link in the description. Next week's lesson, we're going to bust out of only playing triads and we're going to start working on seventh chords. So don't miss that. Looking forward to seeing you there and thanks so much.